Well, hello. I need to turn on some lights, apparently, so I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought I was going to get a chance to, you know, test my settings and everything before it started, but nope, it started, so here I am. Um, looks like we've got one person watching. Well, welcome. Uh, one person. I, I didn't know if uh, today on Easter I'd have very many viewers, but here I am. Uh, so I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. And this week I didn't uh, do this on time, uh, even though I had plenty of time, because uh, well, I, I just thought to myself, Friday I'll film it. So Friday I spent digging out from the snow. <laughs> Um, I'm not 100% sure how much snow we got, but uh, I'm hearing somewhere between uh, 15 to 20 inches. So I'll have to, I can convert that to centimeters. Uh, so let's say 15 times 2.54. So 38 to what the, uh, 20 times 2.54. Uh, to to 51 centimeters if you're in a metric country. So welcome Archivist uh, 17, Jay Lee, Pens, Pencils Plus, and David Anderson. So glad to have you all here. So now I know I'm glad I converted to metric for some of you. <laughs> but anyway, so I spent Friday digging out from the snow, and by the time I was done, I was pretty sweaty and tired, and I just thought, nope, I don't feel like doing a video. I'll just do it tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow came. And uh, so what I did is I dug out around the car, because the car, if you saw the pictures, was buried in the snow. So I dug out a hole around the car, and I thought, well, black car, spring sun, it's not going to take long, it'll just melt free. I, I, I was right as far as that goes, but there was a lot of snow underneath it. And then when the city plows the streets, they kind of pile up a mess of really hard packed ice. And... Uh, so I still haven't gotten through all that ice, but I've got kind of a speed bump at the end of my driveway. I can get the car over it. But I couldn't get the car out because of all the snow that drifted underneath it. So then I had to start digging that out, and I felt my back, my back go bang. <laughs> and uh, so today I can walk around because I got up, did the lights and everything. But yesterday after that, I just like, no. <laughs> So there was nothing happening yesterday. Hello, Brian. Hello, Sajad Hussein. Um, so I'm glad you all were able to make it. Like I'm just relating my whole blizzard shoveling adventures. But the car is able to get out now. Um, I mean, where would I go? But I mean, it's Easter. But <laughs> I can get the car out now if I have to. And my back is sore, but feels a lot better than it did yesterday after. Uh, trying to get that snow out from under, which is a really awkward position, especially since I have such a narrow canyon to dig in. I should probably go out and like photograph it or something. <laughs> but anyway, that's where I'm at with uh, the blizzard. So I thought, well, heck, hello, Manny Lamont. Uh, oh, we're up to 15 people viewing. So I thought it my computer's over there. So I thought it'd be fun to uh, just do a live stream pens in use instead of pre-recording it because... Uh, you know, it's late anyway, and I, I kind of wanted to do a live stream over the, the you know, this enforced holiday. So I'll tell you, uh, school-wise, we had school Monday. It was a beautiful day. I took pictures of a track meet. Um, I was kind of sorry I'd taken my coat along to the track meet. I, I was, you know, it was a beautiful day. And the school announced, oh, yeah, we're going to cancel school for the next two days. I'm like, okay, maybe Wednesday, but really thir Tuesday also. <laughs> so they knew more than I did, apparently, because, yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday was a bad day when I got up. I'm like, okay, I see the wisdom in not having school today. Uh, Wednesday came, and, yeah, nobody was moving anywhere in the state by Wednesday. And uh, they canceled Thursday also, which with the wind kind of made sense because, again, nobody was moving anywhere in the state. And then we had no snow on, uh, or, of course, no school on Friday because uh, of the holiday, and then uh, Monday also because of the holiday. So nice, long, unexpected break, and uh, I spent it here at home. So that was good. Did a lot of reading, did a lot of cleaning. Um, 
you know, it's not done yet, but I've got some organized piles here, but wow, it looks so much better in every other room except this one. So, you know, all that catching up I had to do. So it's been a good time. Um, let's see, where am I? Oh, Dan H. Uh, oh, I'm glad to, you enjoyed the Pilot Elite. Yeah, that's a nice pen. Uh, it turns out I have a Pilot E95, but the Pilot Elite is the vintage version of that, or I guess in other countries. Hello, Sarah Katie. I suppose in southwestern, well, southwestern Montana, you're probably in the Rockies and laughing at my descriptions of snow. <laughs> uh, Mojave, Mojave Joe, uh, glad to have you. And Manny asked when the book reviews are coming back. Um, well, I did one last week. I'm hoping to do one tomorrow. It, it's filmed. I just uh, have to edit it. It's Oh, I was going to have a couple of the upcoming books over here and there, not over here. Uh, anyway, it's going to—it's a book called "Forget the Alamo," and it's about the Alamo. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Sajad, who's oops, that's not reference to me. And Jay Lee, do you have to make up those school days? Yeah, probably. Um, we have some extra day, extra time built into our calendar, but we might have to. But on the other hand. When you have the whole state is shut down, sometimes the governor will declare a state of emergency and just forgive those days. So we're hoping for that. Uh, we always build in our snow days in the last week of school. So we have a short last week of school. So if you know we have to add back the snow days, we just make it a long last week of school. So that's, that's what the plan is. Um, oh. Okay, Archive of 17 pointed out that Doug Rathbun did a video on the E95S. So, yeah, I, I'll be curious to see what he thinks of that. So, I will have to go there. Uh, so, I was going to try to do a pens in use. I've got some pens and uh, going to reveal a couple of things. And Doodlebud reviewed an older pilot pen yesterday, maybe. Oh, you know, I'm subscribed to Doodlebud, but, uh, you know, after my back went boing yesterday, I. Uh, I really wasn't watching any videos. I kind of laid there for a while. I, I had a book. I uh, I don't know. I, I was kind of in a haze of pain yesterday. But like I said, I feel a lot better today. So glad it healed. The last time I, my back went boing, it was a long time before it felt good again. So <laughs> I think I knew this time that something bad had happened. So I stopped doing what I was doing and... That's what saved me from that being worse. So anyway, let's see if I can remember. It's been so long since I've done a live stream. Let's see if I remember how to turn this camera so, so that it looks down at the pens. So, whoop, not like that. Let's try like this. There we go. And yes, it's a hardwired camera. And it has an old fashioned zoom where you do it manually. Um, so from left to right, I have, okay, I forgot this about live streams, but what I see on the screen is exactly opposite to what I see, to what you see. So uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna look at the screen. So from left to right, I have the Cora, which is a Dutch pen. I have a, a sorry, I'm all screwed up because I keep looking at the screen. Uh, Lamy Studio. I have a Lamy 2000, Waterman Karen, Reform 4383. I have a Nakaya Decapod Twist. I have a Pelican Silvexa 21, a um, Platinum Izumo, sorry, drew a blank there for a second. Aurora 88 and a Parker Dual Fold. So you might recognize, although they're not quite all together, these four here were part of my pens and juice, and I was going to release last week what uh, the actual juice was, but, you know, then I had a busy week. So this week was much better other than the whole shoveling thing. <laughs> so let's take a look at how they write. And, of course, I'm going to use my um, cognitive surplus journal. And usually I edit this whole transform out, but you get to your... Oops almost knocked a bottle of ink off the 
desk. But this week you get to see the unedited version because it's live. All right, and I will uh, write my first little bit here and then I'll decide if this is uh, working or not as far as lighting. Because I have a few things I can do and this camera is very different. So let's start with a Cora. Uh, <laughs> I just got asked uh, if uh, anyone's bringing a bottle of Boone's Farm to my family gathering today. <laughs> well, my family's in Pennsylvania. I'm here. So my parents don't drink. So probably not. <laughs> um, oh, and then Sajad Hussein is happy to see the Decapod twist. And yes, that's a great pen. This is a great pen, too. This is a Cora which like I said, is a Dutch model. So this was supposed to be, not today, it was supposed to be April 15th, 2022. And it's easier for me to keep track if I look the next week and can look back and add seven. So whoop, trying to adjust here. There we go. Well, okay, that's absolutely horrible. All right, but we'll live with it. So the Cora, nice Dutch pen, very, uh, it's a, um, a piston filler. And I'm writing at a weird angle. And yeah, it's called a Cora. I, I was a, wasn't able to find much about this pen, but uh, a viewer a while back sent me some stuff that it looks like it may have been made by Caveco, which I can believe. So the Cora is full of Ackermann. Grinmark Smaragd. And I bought a, a, I guess it was a smaller bottle of this. I uh, was surprised by how much ink was in it. So this is one of those inks that's going to take forever to use up. I've been trying, but, uh, you know, those smaller bottles are ones for easier victories. But I'll tell you what. When I do use it up, the Ackermann bottles are pretty cool. So let me show you one I have here hiding. Okay. And Sajad Hussein mentioned about the Japanese ver version of the Elite E95S versus the Korean. And uh, that's good to know. I didn't know there was such a thing. So this is uh, what an Ackermann bottle looks like. This was sent to me empty. But they have this nice uh, marble in it so that when, you know, it's down, it seals the ink in the upper chamber. And when it's up, you can, you know, fill the upper chamber. And, uh, yeah, the marble just comes out. So, you know, don't lose it. I actually, uh, I don't like soda, but I was in the mall in Rapid City long before the pandemic. Uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. And uh, they were selling soda there at a in the food court that had an opening like that with a marble which i just thought was really cool so uh, i bought one it was disgusting i like i said i don't like soda but hey it was uh different all right so this is the lamy studio uh manny lamont i'll probably never use up any ink i've got noodler's blue black is close to being finished yes you are right uh my I use up black ink, usually a couple of bottles of that a year. But uh, as for the other colors, it's very rare. So that's why I've been focusing more on the small bottles for now. Uh, David Anderson, what kind of nib is the Cora? So let me turn on the light here. I don't know if it'll help because this camera's not a great for, not amazing for close-ups. But anyway, it looks like a lion. Um, standing up. I've never seen this emblem on any other brand, but uh, I kind of think it's one of those Bach nibs just with different branding on it. Okay, so anyway, as far as the Lamy Studio, uh, I was, this is one of those pens I'd kind of like to sell, but Studios spelled with a D. Um, but I, I had a video in mind with it, so I kept it, or so I inked it up. And the ink in it is a Roshizuku Amairo, which 
which is a nice sky blue. And it just so happens to be another one of those really small bottles that I have in my collection that I hope I can very quickly use up. Um, I actually did use up, I don't know, in the last few weeks, Murasaki Shikabu and something else. Anyway, both Iroshizuku inks. Momiji, that was the other one. Oh, forgot the rest of my swatch. Um, <laughs> Sajad Hussein, I'm more likely to use up, to read all the books I own than use up all the bottled inks I have. Yeah, that's true. Um, I do have a lot of books, though. But I had a weird experience. I woke up about, I don't know, must have been 5.30 this morning. And, uh, well, none of you have ever been in my house, but I have two bookshelves in the bedroom and then four bookshelves in the living room. And I happened to look over at one of the bookshelves in the bedroom, and uh, I thought, that is quite the tower of books on top of the shelf. Because, <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of books on that bookshelf that, just don't fit so i just started stacking them on top so maybe i should start dealing with that and maybe uh edit my book collection so this is the lamy 2000 which i just realized i never showed anybody this is just my uh, everyday writer pen during the school year i give it a break in the summer so i can use other pens but just a very comfortable pen and, you know, it also has a metal section like the Lamy Studio, but I like it a lot better. I don't know if it's the texturedness of it or what. 120 milliliter bottles of Birmingham Pens ink. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that, when you realize your pen takes like a milliliter or two of ink, you know, that could be at least 60 fills on your pen, probably more. You realize how long it's going to take to go through these, especially if you swap colors a lot. So, so what I'm doing with this pen, and whatever replaces it in the summer, uh, is I decided I'm just going to start using up bottles of black ink. Because like I said, that's an ink that I use up fairly quickly. So I just decided, you know, I'm going to just keep filling it with Parker Quink Black until that's gone. Then I'll start filling it with uh, whatever else I have until that's gone and i'm just going to continue the process until i'm down to just one black ink is it weird that i have more than one color of black um two years ago i think it was during the black lives matter protests i did a video where i used all black ink and it was kind of amazing um how many black inks i had because i did a pens in use with 15 different colors of black and then i discovered hey i've got a lot um, okay, so this is funny. Manny Lamont, the reason your comment isn't showing up is it's held for review by some automated sensor on YouTube. Um, so I'll show it here. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't see the problem with the comment, but apparently Noodlers does, or I'm sorry, YouTube does. Noodlers Black has a nice oily smell to it. So, uh, apparently that triggered the auto sensor on YouTube for some reason. All right, this is my Waterman Karen. I was told by somebody that it look, has the ship look, but only when it's uncapped. And I think you're right, whoever said that. Because it's got, you know, here's the prow of the ship, here's the stern. I hope I'm using the right terms. I'm not a boat person. I have been sailing once um, with Pierre Gustafson, but that's about it. Anyway, this pen is probably not going to be here next week because it's almost empty, but we'll give her one more whirl. So, Waterman Karen. And yes, that is a pretty pen. Um, has a broad nib on it, which I was, took a little struggle to find it because mostly here in the U.S. you can only find fine or medium. And the ink in it is diamine. I'm suddenly drawing a blank. I want to say Guns and Roses, but that is not right. Skull and Roses, there we go. Guns and Roses would have been a band when I was a kid. I think Skull and Roses is a song. I think Guns and Roses had uh, somebody who's a pretty big name, was like their lead singer. Uh, 
No, no, now suddenly I've got Guns N' Roses songs going through my head. I feel like I should burst out in song, but I will control myself. I promise. Uh, <laughs> Karan is a bit like a supermodel among Waterman's beauties. Yes, this is a sexy pen. And, and you know, just a very well thought out design. Um, Mr. Hussein actually objected a little bit to my. Uh, uh, I had a Parker Ellipse last, no, that was this week I did the video where I compared this to the Parker Ellipse and uh, felt that this is the much superior pen. And, you know, I can't say I disagree with you. It's just a very thought out theme and they followed through. This is another interesting one. Okay, and Pensane enjoyed my shootout video. Well, thank you. I usually call them rodeos, but, you know, my big thing is just to share a couple pens. I'm not trying to say, oh, this one's better. Well, sometimes I am, but more often it's just sharing different pens. So this is a Reform 4383. Uh, interestingly, it's got triangular ends, but then it, it's round here in the middle. And this is probably from the 70s. Uh, this has a Reform nib in it, but or does it need it under better light? No, oh, it has a reform nib in it. And uh, some of these came with Bach nibs, and they're amazing. You now, the reform nibs tend to be problematic like that. See, I was actually writing with this earlier today, if you can believe it. But this pen will, you know, it'll have hard starts or just like, I don't want to write all of a sudden while I've been writing with it. It just quits. So I haven't quite figured this pen out. You know, sometimes these pens need their nib, their tines opened up. Okay, and it was just writing on the damn paper towel. Sorry, pardon my French. Uh, sometimes they need their tines opened up. Sometimes they're just uh, need to be realigned. I've done all the above with this pen, so I have not quite worked it out. Reform 4383. Uh, so, other than being a reform nib, I don't know anything about it. Uh, okay, it's a 14 karat gold nib, so there's that. Uh, the ink in this is Colorverse, which I had in a different pen. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, I had this specific ink in it, and it grew crusties, which is something I've never seen from this ink before. You know, when I say crusties, like it crystallizes and the crystals grow on the nib and around the feed and stuff. You know, certain diamine nibs can be guilty of, or diamine inks can be guilty of that. So I'm not sure if, if this was one of them. You know, Colorverse is a, I think it's a Korean company. South Korean, of course, because, you know, <laughs> North Korea would not have that. Yeah, it is a, an attractive ink. Uh, Manny asked me if that happens with shimmer inks. So you've probably heard me mention that shimmer inks aren't one of my favorites. Um, I haven't had crusties grow with my shimmer inks. My big problem with them is they're hard to clean out, and they just, uh, the shimmer quickly disappears because it all collects in the feed and whatnot. So with the Nakaya decapod twist I don't remember what ink is in it so we'll find out together I started to write an M decapod twist this uh, is a pen that basically my viewers purchased for me because uh, I would never spend this kind of money on a pen by myself um, okay, yeah, and I see a few people mentioning diamine, ancient copper getting crusty. That's a bad one. Uh, I have not used the two Monteverde inks or the Bilberry, but it doesn't surprise me. I think for the most part, it's certain color families. Oh, Colifolia Bour Bourgogne. So this is actually uh, one of the inks that was represented by Juice or I pretended it was juice anyway in my April Fool's video.
Uh, this is a very nice wine colored ink. I can see it's a little dark, so I, it's got me wondering. It may have been a couple of days since I used this pen, which is strange because I used a lot of pens over the last couple of days. But now this one also doesn't sit in the pen case with the others. Uh, it sits in its own private little uh, pen sh pen shimono on uh, my end table so it doesn't get damaged. <laughs> so maybe that's why I didn't use it as much. And I usually don't have this many pens ink. To, oh, a Nakaya Decapod. Oh, just a regular one. Yeah, I was really torn. You know, I liked this green finish, green and brown, whatever it's called. But that red one, there's there's a red one I really like. It's a red and kind of a light color. Uh, I think there's a red one and a dark color too, but the red and the light color, I just thought, wow. So I was torn, but, you know, there can be only one. So here, kind of randomly, out of nowhere, this is a Pelican Silvexa 21. Oh, Tess, I'm glad to have you, even if you're a little bit late. Nothing wrong with that. I was actually showing this pen to somebody today. Sorry. A little bit of ink got on the on the the section here but anyway i'm glad you could make it so this is a fun pen it's a pelican silvexa 21 has a fine nib um, just a nice perfectly workable nib now one thing let's see maybe the light if i turn on this light it'll show it better there's a hole here in this mm, I might have to wait till next week. Anyway, there's a hole here in the feed. Maybe if I turn it this way. Nope. Anyway, hole in the feed that makes me wonder if it's a Geha or something. You know, if it's related to Geha. Definitely has that slip cap and some of the other things with Geha, but I'm not 100% sure when uh, Pelican bought Geha. So this is a Roshizuku Shinkai. Nope, always take care of family first, but I'm glad to have you back. Yeah, I knew this was a weird time to do it. I, I usually like to do these in the morning, but, uh, you know, today I thought I'd help out some of my U.S. viewers. So I'm more on my toes in the morning, but, you know, if this was a school day, I'd still be teaching now. So on my toes or not, I'm teaching. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. It is now 2.30. So I get one free period a day where I can just do work and not teach, and it's the last period of the day. So uh, looking forward to it. $1,200. Okay, yeah, I did. And it, uh, admittedly, it's been a few years, but I did not pay $1,200 for this pen. I'm kind of embarrassed how much I paid, but it definitely was not $1,200. Um. So I wonder if it's a, there must be something else special about it. Uh, speaking of special, oops, looking at the screen again. This is my uh, Platinum Izumo. This lighting is terrible. I can usually capture more detail when I do this under the regular camera, but I can't live stream with the regular camera. Uh, but anyway, it's a very pretty pen. And Manny... I'll tell you what you do. This is how I justify these expensive pens, which this one's also not $1,200. I use my YouTube money, so start a YouTube channel. <laughs> All righty. So are you, ooh, Shinkai plus Yamabudo. Are you talking about maybe mixing them, or what are you suggesting? Okay, why do we not want to write all of a sudden? Okay, this is another pen guilty of the same thing where I may have been kind of forgotten about it because it's sitting by the wayside over on the end table and not in the pen case. Plus the cap was a little bit loose, so I think it got a little dried there. Oh, there we go. I think we're writing now. Also doesn't help that it's getting kind of low.
this was meant to represent there was some kind of weird orange drink that I had. So this is a platinum Izumo. Has a coarse cursive italic nib on it. Uh, oh, a dark lilac. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, de definitely the traveling has gone down. <laughs> um, I haven't even been to visit my parents. Lamy Mango. Sorry, I couldn't remember what ink was in this. Lamy Mango. You know, to be fair, they haven't visited me either, but, you know, um, with the with them being a bit older, I just assume not put them at risk for the virus. I am looking forward to life getting back to normal. You know, in a lot of ways, it's more back to normal, but uh, there's still a few things like travel that just make me nervous. So this is Lamy Mango. Whoever just, oh, somebody just asked about that. Manny asked about that. Hmm. I may have to look for that recipe. This pen is almost empty. This is a very beautiful Aurora 88. Now, you know, I just can't believe it appeals to me because this just is a mess of colors and have nothing to do with Jupiter at all. But I just think this pen is so attractive. Uh, yeah. Of course, Cursive Italic is a lot of fun. I got this pen from uh, the Nib Smith, and he does uh, custom grinds on his pens. So I went for a course, which is Platinum's version of Double Broad. So this is Aurora 88. This has a broad nib on it. And the ink in it is Iroshizuku. Momiji which is a color that I was very surprised to use up when I filmed this last video with it. So, you know, it's it's a very striking red, but it's not a color I ever see myself saying, oh, I better replace that one. So that's why I was kind of surprised to use it up. But hey, I'll take a victory. One less bottle in my collection. Sound like an inkaholic. Yes, the Aurora 88 is awesome. I uh, prefer the vintage version, but I the, the modern version is a very good pen as well. And then my last pen. Oh, and I do have a bottle of Autumn and Rose, so maybe I'll have to start using that up. Uh, this is a Parker dual fold. Um, and I know Parker doesn't get a lot of credit. Uh, a lot of people don't aren't too thrilled with their modern pens, but they do make some new pens. Um, that are quite good. Some that are not terribly great. You know, it, it's like they've kind of lost their urge to innovate. When, and when you look at what the company is now, where it's owned by somebody else uh, that really just bought them to make money, you can kind of see where, yeah, they've probably lost their way and they're just kind of living their last days. Parker Dual Fold. This is the centennial size. Uh, the International is a little bit larger. Oops, that's not a broad. That's medium. And this ink is a Roshizuku. And this is another one uh, I was very surprised to use up. But, you know, this is one I know I've been using a lot lately. So, Hiroshizuku Murasaki Shikabu. Shikabu. There we go. Um, you're right, Dan. There, there's almost no restrictions in the U.S. There, there's a couple on certain areas, like uh, I think plane travel, you still have to wear a mask. But, you know, here in North Dakota, nobody's wearing a mask. Um I think Philadelphia just reinstated a mask mandate. But yeah, basically the U.S., it's almost all done. And I'm kind of, you know, when I look at what's going on in like Shanghai, China, where they're still doing total lockdowns and things, I'm thinking, you know, that didn't work as well as we hoped it would. So 
I think maybe we would be better off, I don't know, getting vaccinated, <laughs> getting, since the Chinese vaccine isn't the greatest, maybe start buying the Western vaccines. I don't know. But anyway, uh, so how many inks do I have? I don't even know. I have a lot. Uh, the Parker Dual Fold, yes. That is one of the two models that I really appreciate the most from Parker. Uh, the other one is the Sonnet. I really like the Sonnet. And I'll admit, I was impressed by their modern version of the Vector, too. All righty, so we'll pull up here so you can get an overview of that whole mess. So those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. Uh, we'll flip it over to my face, and I can't believe I've been talking pens for 35 minutes. All righty, so that's me sideways. That's me right side up. And that's me pulling the camera back so it's not right in my face. I apologize if this is making horrible microphone sounds. There we go. All righty, so I am going to, give me a second, I'm going to move the, the laptop so I can read it at a more natural angle. There we go. And I... Need a sip of water here. That is kind of dark colored. I wanted, hope I wasn't cleaning pens of that one. <laughs> All right. So uh, we've got Archivist 17. I, I call the pilot Hiroshizuku Murasaki Shikabu PIMS. Oh, okay. I, it took me a minute. That's a mnemo uh, mnemonic. Gotcha now. Um, <laughs> and I think Pims is probably a little bit of British humor because that, that's not a reference that's familiar to me. I know I've heard it on uh, British TV, but uh, and I'm assuming British. Uh, yeah, Tess, I don't enjoy doing uh, a lot of things on non-computers they just don't seem to work right i you know if i have to look something up on the internet i want to go to my computer if i want to type an email computer um don't use my cell phone for a whole lot it, almost a waste of money okay it's a drink in the uk thank you now i know <laughs> another one <coughs> excuse me another <coughs> wow see i would edit that out if this wasn't live um so, another pens and juice, I guess. Down a little more of what I hope is not inky water. I uh, actually did have to get some work done on my water system, so I'm hoping it's just a legacy of that. Um, yeah, that was fun, but hey, the plumber came on Saturday, which is unusual, but he said, well, I've been stuck at home for three days, so might as well do something on Saturday. Um <laughs> anyway, uh, I if you look at the video links, I've got a couple of things underneath there, so I thought I would just quick share them if nobody has questions. So I'm leaning over to grab a notebook. Hey, my lava lamp is starting to... Oops. Which way? Okay. Sorry. Like I said, the screen is backwards from what I see. My lava lamp is barely starting to lava. Maybe by evening. Um... So anyway, I, I had a couple of stories. Yeah, when you say pilot Hiroshizuku and then you use some Japanese name, you do sound smart and very cultured. Um, so I've got a, a couple of stories. One of them was about a hotel in Rapid City. Weirdly enough, I was actually in Rapid City when all this was going down. I just didn't know it was going down. Uh, so there was a, a shooting at a hotel in Rapid City. And uh, it was between two Native Americans. And one of the owners of the hotel then said, hey, I am not going to have any more Native Americans renting rooms here. And then apparently there, there were some people that were denied rooms for various reasons that also happened to be Native American. Now, it should be clear that this is just one owner of the, mo of the hotel. but So I don't know 
if it's an actual policy of the hotel or how this all works. Uh, that's something I just haven't been able to get clear on. But anyway, uh, a number of workers at the hotel quit over this, including the entire bar staff. And right now there is apparently a lawsuit in court over this whole thing. And I can't find any more up-to-date news on it, so I'll just keep you up-to-date as I find stuff. But I had a couple of people write to me about this, thinking, well, you should bring it up in a pens and use. And I'm like, well, okay, we got April Fool's pens and use this week, so I don't think so. But uh, then I didn't do one last week because I was just busy. I am really scared that that is ink water. You know what? I think it is ink water, so you all just pause a second because I'm... I mean, I usually don't do it in a water glass, but I don't know why it's dark. So I am going to just go quick, get a different water glass. Okay, mystery solved. Uh, I don't know if it's a good way or a bad way, but I just went and got a new water glass. Hello, Marilyn, darling. Got a new water glass and uh, looked um, looked down at the dishwasher, which is where I'd gotten the other one out of, and I thought, those are all dirty dishes. So the dark color in it is whatever I was drinking out of it last. So uh, this is a fresh one from the cupboard, so you can see it's much more clear and not dark. So I don't know what I was drinking in the water there, but eek. <laughs> um, I forgot where I was with the story, but anyway, so there, there was a big protest in Rapid City that happened the day after I was in Rapid City, and uh, I just can't find anything newer on the story. So I, I suppose now we're waiting for it to work its way through the court system. But Rapid City is about I want to say 12 or 20, somewhere one between there, uh, 12 to 20 percent Native American. So, you know, when you say we can't have Native Americans here, you're not just saying, you know, one or two people can't stay there. You're actually, I mean, not that you should ever say that, but you're actually uh, really offending a large number of probably your workers and potential customers. So, um, the Last Emperor, the Sumi Inc. I'm trying to think if I know that mo that one. Uh, I know there was a movie about The Last Emperor of China. Except I don't think it was called The Last Emperor. I don't know. I'm drawing a blank there. Sorry. Um, happy Easter to you too, Miss Marilyn Darling. Um... And it looks kind of blue. Yeah, it, it was, I don't know, it was kind of looked gray to me, but, you know, just like, how did I not notice? So, huh. um. <laughs> yeah, that could be a dangerous combination. That's funny. And yeah, stupid for a business owner. Hello, Will Hodge. Um, I don't think I've ever... Because usually I, I clean out my pens. I, I've got like these little yogurt containers that I use for my pen. So I'm pretty sure it wasn't ink because I, you know, just mixing non-food with food service stuff just isn't something I do. Okay, so that's not the movie I'm thinking of. Well, now I'll have to check it out. Um hmm. yeah, I Never, I've heard of it. I just never have seen it. Um, so anyway, the other story I'd put down below, uh, South Dakota had a big, made a big step. So this all seems to be happening in South Dakota, not North Dakota. I prefer if our state stays quiet because we, we have enough people that will do crazy stuff up here. Um, but anyway, the South Dakota Attorney General was impeached last week, which is something I never expected and a 
apparently is a first in South Dakota history. Uh, so what happened is back in September 12th, 2020, Attorney General Jason Ravensborg was uh, driving home from a political event at night and uh, killed a man named Joe Bover um, while driving. And he is still in office as of right now. Uh, what he was doing is he was heading uh, west on Highway 14 near Highmore, South Dakota. And that's when he struck and killed Mr. Bover. Uh, Bover was walking, facing the traffic on the shoulder and carrying a flashlight, which they know because you know, they found all the above. Uh, so Ravensborg later told officials, well, I thought I'd hit a deer. So one thing, we don't, yeah, he refused to resign. He's been asked to resign, and he refused, which, <laughs> what? Um, we had a politician, I don't think it was the attorney general, I forget what his office was, but we had a politician here in the state, one of the state offices that resigned. Um, he never killed anybody, he just got in trouble over alcohol and drunk driving and stuff. So, anyway, um, we don't know if this guy was drinking, so I'll just make that clear. Why don't we know? Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, the accident occurred, well, um, he, he called 911 about 45 seconds after the accident. Uh, he claimed that he didn't know what he'd hit. So the Hyde County Sheriff, Mike Volick, lived right near the, at, near the scene, responded. They say they walked up and down they could not find the body uh, although later on it turns out from cell phone data that the attorney general walked right by the body and according to investigators the flashlight was on and should have shown up like a beacon but anyway uh, they walked right by it according to cell phone data and couldn't find the body so the sheriff loaned him a personal vehicle which says to me that he's probably friends with the sheriff or something. Uh, I don't know. It could be he's just trying to help out the attorney general too. Who knows? But uh, anyway, kind of mysterious. And uh, so that's what he used to get home. So he returned the vehicle the next day. And he looked for what he'd hit. And found the body laying in the ditch. So he did not call 911 when he found the body. He went to the sheriff's house. The sheriff looked, checked out the scene, and then said, okay, Mr. Ravensborg, you can just head on back to Pierre, South Dakota, which is the capital of South Dakota. So I think for obvious reasons, they did not want South Dakota law enforcement investigating this one. Uh, and I haven't forgotten your question about history of nibs there. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> North Dakota Bureau of, Crim of Criminal Investigation was put in charge instead. So that clears up that conflict of interest thing. So I think, you know, the right thing to do. So they did their investigation. But what I find interesting, and I'm not clear on why this is, the county state's attorney office did a five-month investigation, which ended on February 18th of 2021. Uh, he ended up getting misdemeanor charges, operating a vehicle while using a mobile or electronic device, lane driving violation, and careless driving. And no other charges due to lack of provable facts. Um, but this gets interesting because just recently, the interviews between the North Dakota Bureau of Criminal Investigation and Mr. Uh, sorry, I've got to look at his name again, Ravensborg, were released. And it seems they didn't believe him for a lot of things. Um, for one thing, the man he hit, his glasses were found in the vehicle. Uh, one half of the glasses in the front seat, one half in the back seat. But anyway, so as one of the investigators says to this guy, his face was in your windshield. Think about that. Um, and then... Uh, Due to the timing, the investigators actually think he was on the phone reading when this happened. So again, maybe not alcohol involved, but... Oh, I don't have a cell phone over here. Looking down at this while, do, while driving. 
and uh, I've seen it. I think you've all seen it. Um, Larry Barona's will sit, always ends his videos with "Don't text and drive." Uh, I got to ride on a bus a little while ago, and I just remember looking out the window, looking down at somebody in a suburban in Bismarck, where we had two lanes. Not yeah, Bismarck. We had two lanes going each way. And this guy is on his phone and not even looking at the street. Yipe! <laughs> so, you know, I, I think that's easily possible. Uh, the investigators wanted to know why he didn't see the flashlight, and he didn't have a good answer because, as they said, it shone like a beacon. Uh, the governor of the state, who I almost never agree with on anything, uh, wanted actually wants this guy impeached. Um some of his defenders are saying, well, it, it's not an a crime related to his office. <laughs> He's the attorney general of the state. Um, so he was impeached by the South Dakota House on April 12th, 2022, over a year and a half since this accident. Uh, they impeached him 36 to 31. Now, being South Dakota, you know uh, that... To get that kind of a vote, there had to be a lot of Republicans voting to impeach him, because I think a lot of people were angry, uh, pretty horrified by what they saw. And he sent two letters to the state legislature prior to this. And I, again, I've got all the details down in the links, but uh, I just thought that this was a very interesting story, especially... And maybe I'm superficial, but the thing that struck me was the cell phone aspect of it. Because, so here's change of topic slightly. Here's a story from me, probably, how long have I been teaching? 22 years ago? 23 years ago? Anyway, I'll drink some more clear water here. So um, I was moving to North Dakota. I was about a week away from moving to North Dakota. And I was driving in my hometown to... I forget why, but anyway, I was in my hometown driving around, and there are, at that time, now there's three, but at that time there were two red lights in town, and so I stopped at the main one, and looked down at the radio, looked up, because I heard a crash, and one car had been turning, and another car had kind of hit it on the side like this, and so the police asked me if the light had changed, I'm like, uh, I don't know, because I was looking at my radio. So uh, it just took a minute like that, and I totally missed whatever happened in that accident. Um, and, and I, you know, a radio, I mean, it was one with a dial. It was a 1980, no, wasn't have been a Ford Tempo. It was a 1990 Geo Prism that I was driving, because that was my first car. Um Anyway, the radio on it was just a regular dial. It was nothing very exciting. So just with that, I was distracted for a second, missed that. You know, and thank God I didn't pull forward or something. But anyway, I just think how much more distracting is it to surf the web, which is apparently what this attorney general is doing on his cell phone this whole time. How do you read and drive at the same time, especially at night? And I know it's South Dakota. The roads are straight. Uh, there's no trees. There's probably no traffic. I know these roads because I, well, they're not as straight where I live, but they're still pretty straight. Um, but, you know, deer and antelope like to hide in the ditches and they go boing, boing, boing across the street. I've hit one or two of them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just don't get it. But anyway, uh, got a couple other comments here that I got to catch up on now. Um... Oh, architect nibs. Yeah, I I haven't used a good one. I used a meh one. It was interesting. It wasn't particularly thrilling, but you know, when you're talking Hebrew or Arabic script, I also don't write those languages, so that's kind of interesting. Um, and Tess V says that the Lamy's new cursive nib is good for Arabic and Hebrew calligraphy. That's interesting. I didn't know they had a new cursive nib. I'd be curious what pen that's on. Uh, yeah, uh, Dan H. says it sounds a lot like the Chippequiddick incident with Ted Kennedy. Yeah, that's a suspicious one. I am amazed that his political career survived that. 
And I know people want to say Democrats, but <laughs> I got it. To survive that and get voted back into office over and over again, I just there is a lot more than just party corruption going on there. Um, Miss Marilyn Darling says people do it here all the time in California, and I I don't know if I want to hope you you're talking about the being on the cell phone when driving or or the killing people when driving, but either one is bad. Um, I did just. When you're driving, you've got a responsibility. I mean, if it's just you, fine. But you've got a responsibility to all the other people around you. Uh, my friend Mike Cycling catches a lot of London phone drivers on ca <laughs> on camera, who, who he, which he submits to the police who have passed hundreds for prosecution. I went to a meeting with somebody, um, well, it was before the pandemic, but. So it's been a lot of years, but you know, we're driving down the interstate and we were in a, I don't know, suburban kind of thing. So we were up kind of high. And he he said exactly that, he that he should just start photographing them on their cell phones and posting it to a website. So that's kind of funny. Um, okay, I've got the scribe architect nib on one of my oversized SDs. Why? Okay, so why was the guy walking down the highway? Good question, because that was one of the first things I wondered when I heard this story. Although I will admit to, in college, doing a lot of nighttime walking on, uh, on highways. He was walking because his pickup had broken down. And he, I don't know if he needed some part or something, but he'd gone to his house to get it. And he was walking back to his pickup to see if it, he would be able to work, get it working. So that's actually why he was walking down the highway. Um, and I will say that when I, when I would, I don't walk on the highway at night anymore. I'm smarter than that. But when I was in college, you know, you do dumb things when you're in college. Sometimes I'll have to tell you what <laughs> my stargazing incident. But anyway, so we're, um, but I was always mindful that maybe they don't see me. So I was always extra cautious. But then again, when you're off on the shoulder quite far, which this guy apparently was, you're probably feeling pretty safe and highway speeds in South Dakota are 65 miles an hour. And this guy had a, this attorney general also has a record of speeding. So I suspect he was going a lot faster than 65 and probably smoked this guy before he even had a chance to react. Uh, texting and driving is about as abhorrent as DUI. I agree with that. Um, I, when you're driving a big 2000 pound car, you just, your first responsibility is that car. Um, new replacement nib. Okay. And all right, I'll have to look at Pen Boutique just to see what it's like. Um, lots of folks think driving is a right, not a privilege. Yeah, see, it is a privilege. And these things come with a lot, as you say, they come with a lot of responsibility. I, uh, I don't see driving in the Constitution anywhere. And, uh, and some people, that's why you can lose your license. I've known a few people who've lost their licenses over errors they've made with driving. Who doesn't own a cell phone on the side of the road in the 21st century? Um, well, the attorney general owned one because he did call on it. I don't know if this Joe, sorry, Joe Bover had a cell phone, but he was dead, so he wasn't going to call anybody, but the attorney general did. Um, and apparently it worked because you know, they were able to track his movements and he was able to call 911 with it. Um, I am going to mispronounce this one. I am sorry. Aring, Aring, sorry, 66. I drove past Grove City on exit on Penn Turnpike several weeks ago. I thought about your old hometown. Yeah, no, Grove City is not my old hometown, but I think some of you know that that's where I went to college. My old hometown is north, let's say north central Pennsylvania. Um, but yeah, it, <laughs> Grove City is where I do all that walking at night. Uh, I just, you know, it'd be late and I'm like, I want to go to Walmart. So I'd walk to Walmart late at night. Why? Don't know. <laughs> uh, 
okay, Sarah Katie says they maybe didn't have reception. Yeah, I can easily point you to some places around here where there's no cell phone reception. I don't know that part of South Dakota, whether there is a good reception there or not. And, oh, and a hitchhiker walking along the highway. Yeah, that would be scary, especially at night when you're not expecting it. They just kind of come I Especially when it's getting cold, you're like, oh, I should help them. And you know, at the same time, like, oh, but I shouldn't pick up a hitchhiker. And, uh, oh, but they're way out in the middle of the country and in the middle of nowhere. And it's cold. And, yeah. So kind of a scary thought. Yeah, driving... I'm responding to Nick's G. Uh, driving in the country is can be relaxing. Uh, in the city, I get nervous. Um, that's why when I visited Pierre Gustafson in Minneapolis, he did the driving because I was nervous. <laughs> I'm not used to driving in the city. Um, why didn't he call for help? So, uh, okay, so to clear it up, the attorney general did call 911 when he originally hit the guy. Uh, the person that responded was the sheriff that lived nearby. The sheriff loaned him a personal vehicle and sent him home. Uh, so he didn't have to stick around for, I don't know what. I, I guess maybe the sheriff just decided there was nothing. That, that's the weird part that nobody can understand. So he shows up the next day to see what he got, what he hit. Like, would you do that? I don't know. But he did. And that's when he found the body. Uh, doesn't call 911 this time. Goes, talks to the sheriff guy. The sheriff says, I'll take care of it. You just head on home. And that's what's weird. And that's what the North Dakota, because again, it happened in South Dakota, but they brought in North Dakota investigators. Uh, the North Dakota people thought he was lying. Uh, let's see here. When is, where is the next video outdoors? Um, I want to do one uh, right at, right now. Let's see if I can do this without making everybody seasick. Right now, that's the view out my front window. So you can see that the snow is starting to melt, but it's you know not conducive to hiking right now. <laughs> I thought I'd be able to do some hiking when I went down to lead, but no. <laughs> so anyway, um, yes, <laughs> Angel Alice, yes, I am right next to Rollat. <laughs> uh, walking late at night like Charles Dickens tended to do in his city. Sometimes you walk all the way to the south of London. Yeah, and uh, Charles Dickens, you know, he wasn't dealing with car traffic. He would have been dealing with horses and carriages. But interestingly, uh, Marie Curie's husband, she's a well-known physicist, was actually killed by a carriage, blood dri dri drawn by a horse. So still kind of dangerous. Um, why they invented the slow lane. Yeah, I don't think there is a slow lane on that highway because, you know, it's a two-lane highway in, in the middle of the country. So uh, Will Hodge, I picked up a hitchhiker once. He asked why I was not worried he was a serial killer. I told him what would be the odds of two serial killers. <laughs> what would be the odds of two serial killers in the same vehicle? Okay, that's funny. Driving in San Diego is nuts too. Yeah, I can just imagine. I would want somebody else driving me there. I once walked from Sheffield to oops, Rotherham overnight. I know where Sheffield is. I guess I don't know Rotherham, but you know, I've gone on long walks. Usually it's in the country. I don't, of course, here to walk to the next town is quite a hike. So <laughs> I'm not walking to the next town where I live. Um, in the middle of the minor strike. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think, especially when you're, that could have been interesting, especially going by some pits. I'm just kind of curious uh, off the topic if many of those mines are still open. I know here in the U.S. a lot of coal mines have shut down. You know, people, you know, there's political conspiracies about it, but really it's because 
they're just finding there isn't a market for coal anymore and it's more natural gas. So I'm just curious if that's still, if that's going on in the UK or if it's, you know, different dynamic there. But anyway, I see I've been talking for over an hour, so that's a good long talk. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for joining in. Uh, it's kind of fun. I haven't done a live stream in a long time. I need to do some more. It's, uh, no, I'm always nervous before them because I just think, um, am I going to have a lot of awkward pauses? I, I guess I did have one awkward pause when I went to get a new water glass. <laughs> but anyway, um, but, you know, I always relax once I start doing them. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in and uh, coming up with this pens in use. Um, so I wish you all a happy Easter. And okay, yeah, and you... Archive of 17 answered my question that, uh, yeah, they've all shut pretty much here too. There, there's, there's a few around, there's a few in North Dakota, but most of them are shut. So anyway, thank you all and, uh, happy Easter. And, uh, hopefully you're not enjoying the snow like I am. <laughs> so thank you all for watching. Sorry, Renee, that you missed out, but anyway, Bye-bye, and uh, this should be up shortly on my channel. And it's not stopped yet.